All right, what's going on, Fishaholics? Rich here, and welcome back to hopefully another exciting video. I just ferried to this island that I'm standing on with my kayak, and uh, today we're going to be fishing this river that I fished like a decent amount of times. And uh, I wanted to fish these islands. There's an island there, this is an island, and then there's another island on the other side of this island. And uh, I've never really fished this area by boat or you know from the kayak. And uh, the tide just started coming in, so the current's moving pretty well. And uh, I really just want to, you know, use the kayak to ferry to kind of the different islands. And then we're going to probably just do some wade fishing and uh, try and catch some stripers. And if not stripers, some bluefish or fluke or weak fish, the whole smorgasbord, I'm hoping. And uh, we're probably going to start off with the light tackle inshore rod here, throw around some small plugs and some swim baits, maybe some bucktails. And we'll use that method to hopefully find some fish. And then maybe once we find a couple fish, we'll really try and dial in on them with uh, maybe a smaller, you know, fly profile with the fly rod. And, uh, you know, if that doesn't, you know, if that works, like, you know, I hope it works. We catch them on that rod or the, or the fly rod. That'd be pretty awesome. Uh, and then we're going to fish uh, in the dark. It's 1 p.m. right now. So that's, uh, I don't know, like seven hours down the road. You know, once it starts getting dark, then we have the bigger rod and we'll start, you know, plugging. And, uh, you know, there's been a lot of bunker around in this river. So there's a good opportunity to catch some like pretty big freaking fish if, you know, we find some fish that are just either hanging in the current and waiting for bunker or the fish are, you know, holding on some bunker that we end up finding. So hopefully uh, we can have a good little outing and uh, have some fun fishing, you know, the islands here. So let's take a crack, let's start plugging. Seeing some little bait zipping around in the shallows here. That uh, might be the hot ticket to try and imitate if there's stripers up in the shallows, you know, imitate that with the fly better than this little swim bait. And uh, this island that I just beached the kayak on, I actually already fished around it when there was slack water with this swim bait, didn't get any bites. But uh, now that we got some current moving in, hopefully that'll pull some fish in around us and uh, yeah we're gonna give it a shot and just use the kayak really to kind of ferry to all the different islands and um, fish a bunch of different spots because there is quite a bit of current here you know going like this and I think it'll just be easier than uh, you know fishing out in the channel where you know you catch a fish and then you you know the current's gonna push you way in and move you off the spot but uh, wade fishing we could stay on the spot if we catch something and hopefully by the end of the day, we can find something nice. So it drops off pretty deep right into this channel. So we could really catch like anything here on this small little swim bait. And I'm swimming it just right along the bottom. So that'll be, you know, right in the strike zone for all the above species. But uh, it just depends like if they're gonna feed on this time of the tide, are they gonna feed midday like this where it's 80 degrees and you know bluebird skies uh i don't know it's not, it's not the best you know conditions to be out here but i mean it is it is spring it is early in the season so you sometimes can get on some you know decent action in the middle of the day in the spring because the water's still you know warming up it's not like it's like you know deathly warm summer water so there's a nice uh like flat right here and then there's another island and and the channel kind of goes out by those buoys there and there's probably stripers cruising up on this flat but the problem is is these fish are usually going to be more spooky and uh, they might be more selective on like what they're gonna feed on especially if they're feeding on the small little bait that i saw up shallow you know there's probably shrimp up in here a little spearing a little killies you know any other kind of small stuff so that's probably better to fish uh, with the fly to try and imitate that they might not hit this swim bait, you know, they're gonna to be too selective. But if we get a hit, then we know there's something here, so then we could, you know, switch it up. This is kind of interesting. I was casting out into the channel, and like, look at this. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Oh, 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 oh! Oh no! The sea robins are behind me. That's crazy. Wouldn't be surprised I'm casting out of the channel and the stripers are swimming right behind me. Whoa, pretty good one. All right, we broke the ice with a freaking sea robin. 
Whew. We're baking out here, that's for sure. And uh, I don't understand, I worked that way first, then back, caught a sea rob, then I worked that way along the island and back, then worked that way again, and nothing. Like, the water is like perfect for like an area for striped bass to just cruise by or to be hanging out or to be, you know, to be sitting here, but just seems like there's no stripers here on this part of the tide. Maybe later there'll be some stripers here. But uh, I think the next move is to jump in the yak and we're gonna go across to that island there and see if we have some, some better action. And I uh, wish I for, didn't forget my hat. My, I'm burning out here. All right, so we were paddling over and I decided to jig up a little striper on the Zoom Super Fluke. That's a surprise, maybe, whoa, easy buddy. Maybe now we'll uh, start seeing some activity. There we go. First little guy of the day, not bad. This right here is what we're using, half ounce jig head, little Zoom Super Fluke. When he hit, I was surprised. I was like, wait, is that a fish? Sucks we couldn't do that earlier because we were walking right along this same sod bank, fishing a little swim shad and uh, had no bites at all, but that was like 30 minutes ago. So maybe now some fish are coming through here. There's another one. Oh, a little mini guy. Awesome though. We're just jigging them up right along this sod bank here. And I still don't believe it because I was fishing here just like 20, 30 minutes ago and not even a touch, but I wasn't using this bait though. You know, it drops off like really sharp. Like right here, I'm in 20 feet of water and we're this close to the bank and I was only using a quarter ounce jig before. Now I'm using a half ounce jig. All right, so we're gonna try from the bank now since that we were catching some fish. And here's a nice striper, a big stinky striper. And his stomach is here. He's got some adult bunker in his stomach. We wanna catch one that size, but alive. I think it'll be easier to fish this rip here from the bank, just because I can let it sink to the bottom. Then I can just kind of swim it right along the bottom instead of being drifted off the spot. There he is, first cast. Boom, baby. That's how we do it on the first cast. Not too bad, nice little chubby guy. Let's see if there's any more here. Oh, boom. We're on them now, guys. We're on them. Good thing we're using like tackle. Come on. This is, I think we did catch one smaller than this today. I think my second one was smaller than this, but you know, hopefully we'll see something a little bit bigger mixed in. Ooh. Big dead gator in a bucket. We'll take that with us later. Whoa, that's something a little better. No, and he's going right for this piling. Okay. Stay on there. <laughs> it's not even that big. Bigger. Still a rat. Right now I'm like pleading for the sun to get lower and lower and get down below the horizon for the fishing, but then also because I'm freaking getting toasted out here. This is the last time 
that I'm gonna forget uh, sunscreen and a hat coming out of the water here. And I'm, I gotta tighten my drag a little bit because that little guy pulled pretty good. <laughs> Almost wrapped me around that piling. All right, so that bite is beat. We're gonna have a bite ourselves now. And uh, you know, we're losing the tide, so that's probably why we lost the bite. You know, like I'm getting a lot of hits, but I'm not hooking up on anything. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the kayak out of here after I eat my PB and J, and then we're gonna go to the other side of this island. Try it over there for the outgoing tide. All right, so I'm feeling top water up in here, so we're gonna put on a little smack of Junior. All right, guys, we're back home, and we got back uh, kind of late last night, or I guess early at like 3 a.m., and uh, yeah, I don't know. We fished in the dusk hard and nothing. Then uh, my friend Tom met me out there at dark. We fished for like another two, probably almost three hours in, in the dark, not a touch, um, you know, and I feel like I just scratched the surface. I really want to get back down and fish those islands again, and hopefully we will, but uh, I got like four days back in Jersey until I leave for my cruise. Like, if you don't know, I'm going to Bermuda, St. Martin, Haiti, Puerto Rico, which I'm really super stoked about. And I'm gonna try and do some fishing and filming. It's mainly though like a vacation, like guys trip, but I'm bringing my fishing rod, of course, cause like it's against my religion not to, to bring my fishing equipment. And uh, really, I just wanna fish St. Martin and hopefully catch some tarpon, cause last time I was there, when I was like 10 or 12, I hooked into one tarpon, which cut me off in like 10 seconds. And then the cruise ship like honked the horn and we had to like book it back to the cruise ship or it would have left without us. Uh, so we needed some retaliation down there. And then hopefully in the next four days, um, you know, on top of packing for the cruise. And then after the cruise, I'm going back out to Montauk for the summer and fall. I'll have some time in between packing to get back down to those islands and hit it again. And, um, you know, really try and figure stuff out. I mean, I think I have an idea of where some good locations would be now, like on top of where I was catching the stripers, but other areas around the islands. Because um, until yesterday, <coughs> excuse me, um, you know, I've only seen those islands on Google Maps and then being there it's a completely different situation where you could really see where the rips and the currents you know kind of goes around the points and stuff like that and then you can kind of dial in a little bit better on where fish are going to be hanging out and I think I got some good ideas on where some fluke would really be hanging out now that the season's open and um, you know the water's warming up the, I mean the stripers will probably be moving out now that the water's warming up but the fluke fishing probably could be really good in there so uh, anyway I hope you guys enjoyed the video and never forget live to fish fish to live, and I'll see you guys in the next one.